2003 World Cup. So you don't remember being at the World Cup? No. You don't remember winning that final? No. For me now, it's like there's like an empty void there with CTE. And on my scans, there's like big yellow slugs really? going through the middle and stuff. And then I had a massive low and I was thinking about, I had my shotguns and stuff then because I was hunting. And I just thought, I'm just going to do myself here. So you were prepared to take your own life with a shotgun? Yeah. The stories and stuff like that, like there's, there's people want to hear about World Cups, they want to hear stuff like that, and there's nothing there. That World Cup medal, does that mean anything to you? No. There's no emotional attachment to it, nothing. Actually, no, I... I, I what was I saying then? Welcome to the show, mate. Thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, mate. Very much so. Yeah, very much. Um, let's roll all the way back. Where did you grow up and how did you end up becoming a World Cup winner? It's not the usual rugby story, especially with all those lads going private school and all that that you used to play with. <laughs> um, I, I started playing rugby quite late. I was about 15, 16 when I started. Um, just so you know, sorry, if I start stuttering or forget, just fine, jump in. Yeah, mate, fine. I'm not, if, I'm not one of those, if you stutter, people say don't jump in, but with me, just jump because I'm fine. losing it. Um, yeah, I was, <clears throat> well, I was born in Hemel Hempstead, but literally never really lived there, I think. And my parents split up when I was really early. Um, dad was a policeman. Um, Mum, I don't know what she'd done, to be fair. Um, and when they split up and that. Then I got sent to Norfolk to live with my grandparents for a while. Um, and just got some like fond memories of like Cromer, North Walsham, mm. and all that sort of stuff. So that's why I'm a Norwich City fan as well. Cause when I was older, I used to go there to see my other nan and she, her husband used to take me on the bus all the way to Carroll Road saying. and stuff. So Pretty. I loved it. Yeah. So, um, you know, for me it was, just a bit different, you know, the family was a bit stressed at home and stuff like that. So, you know, we lived on the Eastern District, they called it in, in Northampton, which was like a big council estate, really. Um, at the time, I just thought it was a like, lovely place, really. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You played out, you know, you didn't, didn't go in for dinner, you'd done whatever you wanted. Um, police helicopter was over the top all the time, catching people and, and you know, people were nicking the, uh, posty van all the time and stuff like that and they even banned the postman in uh, Bellinge for a while because he kept getting shot with an air rifle <laughs> every one so it's like you know <laughs> and you know for me life was just playing outside sport up the fields up the we had uh, woods near us and stuff and it was a bit like you know I thought any, any sort of child was really yeah. brilliant um, but then suddenly you know I started getting pushed out to work and stuff. So I started doing a milk round when I was 12. The bloke who, who the milkman had gangrene in his leg. So I'd have to go and do like the milk round with him before school. Mm. I can remember sitting there about five o'clock in the morning, just thinking, oh, I don't want to hear it. And then all you hear is that. Yeah. Oh, he's turned up, it's like that, do you know what I mean? And the old electric. Yeah, 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 just like. So I used to drop off the milk bottles like, <laughs> like on the way to school, thinking they're the ones like the fresh orange juice and that. So I knew I could nick them later and stuff. <laughs> so it was like, that was perfect. And um, in those days they used to do a loaf of bread. They used to do everything, didn't they? So yeah. it's like, right. So we used to, I used to like, you know, do that. And then I had a couple of paper rounds as well. And, you know, so I had a bit of money when I was younger and, you know, mum take it off me and use it. So I had to pay rent and stuff, even mm -hmm. if I was like 12, 13 and stuff. And she was a bit of a pain in the ass. My oldest sort of stepsister left home. I thought, she must've left home when she was about 15, I think mm -hmm. the first time. And uh, and then, you know, it was, it's one of them. I've, I've seen friends now that I've, because of everything that's going on with me now, like I've got a big, nostalgia of my old sort of life and mm -hmm. I've just got big chunks missing in my 20s and or most of my 20s missing so I'd, I'd done a TV documentary and we went back and it was man I hadn't been back there for years 20 years or so but I could tell you every house who lived in that house cars everything it yeah. was just like unbelievable it was just like it was just so pure there mm -hmm. and um, you know it's to go back and it was like it's so small and so sort of shithole really mm. and you know it's it's sort of all 
and that. And it was quite sad, I think, going back there and stuff because you see it, and I had so many sort of happy memories. But then when I look at it, it's you know we just done I just done what I wanted yeah. really. Yeah. What was school life like for you? I just I, I, I liked school to be honest. I always thought you know, I, I never understood people at Wag School because it was like you get fed there, which was good, mm. and you're there with your mates mm. having a laugh. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, so it's a bit like you know, <clears> and it's you know, I was you know when when people say I was a bit of a bit of a toe rag as they say at times and messed around and you know, but I love my sport, so it's brilliant because you've done all the sporting teams there, mm. um, and you know it just sort of kept you off the street where I was yeah. really um, and it was one of them in the old days if if you didn't go you'd, you'd, you'd get dragged to school and yeah. stuff like that and given a slap and mm. teachers if it weren't right mm. they'd have a go at you and, and give you a slap as well yeah. do you know what I mean yeah, yeah, yeah. and if you went home and complained that the teacher had a go at you and stuff you'd get a slap at home slap for being rude <laughs> do you know what I mean so it's like <laughs> and that's where you know I've, I've got my, my, my kids now and it's sometimes I think they sort of they're too nice to kids, I yeah. think, at, at some time. Not times. enough discipline, isn't yeah, it? Exactly, yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. And uh, there's too much of this letters after kids' names yeah. and stuff because there's something wrong with them. And it's yeah. like, no, they're just a little arsehole. Yeah. And I say that about my own yeah. at times. <laughs> <laughs> and did you feel it was nice for you to, with your upbringing, obviously was was tough and rough, was it nice for you to have a community of people around you and being really good at something? That That's that's what it was, you know. Not, I think... I was the hardest on myself, like always thought I was gonna get dropped, always thought. And then, you know, I went for a period when I was about six, 17, 18, 17, I think it was, a few months of just losing my way really. Yeah. And, you know, I was just turning up, I was, you know, got myself out of shape a bit and stuff and just took it for granted. And there was a coach, um, Matt Bridge, and he, I, I just started getting like unfit and stuff. So he he just said, right, I'm dropping you. You're not playing. And everyone's like, you can't drop him. Yeah. Like, I was like one of the sort of better players yeah. and scoring at that level. And he's like, no. Nah. He said, you lot are carrying him. What for him to do like a few minutes? So after, so I started doing a little bit of fitness. And he said, right, you're back in the squad this week, but I'm going to play you as much as you give us in a game. I'm just going to get you that towards the end. And I was like, all right. First game back, he put me on for the last minute. And he says, yeah, you might score a couple of tries. Yeah. But that's all you give us. Yeah. Okay. So that's what you. And then the next week it was five minutes, okay. and then and then I got fitter Clever. and fitter and Clever. fitter. And then suddenly it was like, <clears throat> and it's all these little let like. I, that's why I said like I was I was really lucky to have like amazing people in my life. Mm. You know, <clears throat> him, Mark Lee, but like I said, Keith Picton was the big one for yeah. me. He was one of them. It's like proper old school. You come out the shower and you have you'd have a fag like that in the changing room, and we're only like under nineteens and yeah. stuff like that. And as you walk past him. You'd be like walking without the towel over your shoulder, and they'll be like, just put the fag out on your ass. Like, 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 <laughs> don't walk around like a porn star in here. And, was, and he was like, you've got nothing to show off, so <laughs> put it away. You know, and stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? It was just quality. And it was just like one of these blokes. And, you know, we'd be on the back of the bus and, and coming back from games like in Bath and down Exeter and stuff like that. And we'd have a few beers and stuff. And the idea that I'd got into a bit of trouble, like, and been rude to people in town or something yeah. like that. And in those days, if you had even if you had a youth team tie, you were automatically kicked out of the club because oh. the club was like yeah. the town and stuff like that and you represented that. And he just stuck with me because he knew I was a good lad really, but I just had that edge. And not normally it was like me looking after my mates. Yeah. And they were like, so it's like, all right. So he's like, right, stay on the bus. And the thing is like these bus journeys were miles long. Yeah. One toilet would be overflown. Yeah. One of the lads might've been sick or something <laughs> like that. And I'd have to stay behind and clean it up, and that'd be. It's like, look, you you gonna clean this bus up, because like your behaviour and that, I should kick you out, but I'm not gonna. Fair play. And then we, I, he got us. There was a the last ever proper amateur tour type thing was to America, and we went to Columbus and Chicago, and um, I was I was working then as well, and I just couldn't get enough money, so we got someone to sort of sponsor me. And then when I got, finally got on the plane, I had a few quid, but then he came up with a like, big stash of dollars and oh, stuff. He went, look, mate, don't worry about anything. Oh. And he just taught me little, yeah, little little Cause he knew like I was, I weren't blagging. I was just, I was having to pay rent then. I was, yeah. you know what I mean? I was having to do everything properly. And then I just thought I can't go. And he he just sort of looked after me and got people. And I must admit that that tour was just like phenomenal. Yeah, just really like, opened my eyes. And um, you know, it's, it was him and, when you talk about coming down, like when I 
we'll go on to it later, but you know, I was in Cyprus after Dubai and I was falling apart, crying in the garden, didn't know what was going on because I think I'm like, mm. and he passed away. Right. And I had, I don't know, about five, no, about four pounds, 70 something in my bank account, couldn't fly back, just didn't have the money. And when I was in Cyprus and I couldn't get back to his funeral and stuff, mm. and it was like really yeah. sort of hard and, and stuff. And when I speak to the lads about it, it was, I was like, what's, what's going on? And they said like, he wouldn't come to my first games for England. He said, no, no, no. He said, everyone can play games for England and get down. And he was thinking, right. And he said, but when you make your 50th, he said, I'll come to that because that's when you, you was, sang to Did me. he go? And of course, I got injured. And I'm 47 or 48. So that was me finished. And then one of the reasons I came back uh, yeah. was to make sure I could get back Brilliant. so he could. Be proud. Mm. That's amazing, mate. Tell me about your journey at Northampton and how long were you playing at Northampton before before you got your first England cap? Uh, what was it? 2002 was my first two. cap. So you had five years at Northampton, yeah, roughly five, six years. Five years, but then it was two years before. It was like 2000, 99, 2000 when I changed to hooker. So I'd right, gone okay. to a completely different... And then I've been playing it two years, bit of two years of... And that's it of playing hooker. Isn't that phenomenal? You can do two years of playing hooker and go and play England for 70 odd caps. Mm, just go show there's no one else around. Just <laughs> <laughs> or you were clearing up, which so, I think you were, mate. And, um, you know, it was. What sort of money were you on at Northampton? Do you remember when it turned pro from that 96 up to getting your first cap in <clears> 2002? <throat> can you remember how your money went? Well, I can remember at the beginning, I was on. They put me in with Matty Stewart, living with Matty Stewart for a while. Who's uh, he? He played at Blackheath, and yeah. he came to the ex army as well. Yeah. And then he played for Scotland. You get one of these typical Scots that, all right, mate, how are you doing like that? How are you doing like? It like, sounds a bit like you. Do you know what I mean? But playing for Scotland, Scotland. it's all right. He's had some haggis. Yeah, get him in. Get him in. <laughs> and um, and he, he, he rooming in with, or living in his house was a nightmare. They paid they paid the rent for me, and then I think I was on fifty quid a week. Wow. So I had to pay my bills out of that and stuff. And and this was full time? Yeah, yeah. Wow. And I was I was doing my carpentry apprenticeship. It, yeah. And it was a bit like, well, you've got to make a decision now, yeah. that or that. And looking at it now, I wish I'd have just carried it gone, do you know what? I know, I've, but I am signed that, but I wish I'd have got that. and As well as? And just well, done carried on your carpentry yeah. as well as your rugby, yeah. 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 And what, how did that grow then? Because you can't be working on 50 quid a week for, for very long. Was there a point when they come and they went, you know what, you've earned your stripes, now we're going to put you on a proper contract? Yeah, but I'm trying to... I can't, like, Yeah. remember. I yeah. wouldn't even have a clue what money was around. I know it was, it's nowhere near what people thought. Yeah. Would it start off at like six grand, twelve grand, twenty five yeah, grand, that, like that kind of thing? Yeah, yeah, it grew yeah. like that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And what was the what was the movement like then for you getting your first training camp? Did someone come in and say, Right, England are calling, we want you to come and train with us, so you get on? <clears throat> well it was a weird one because I'd had enough of it. Like the, the throw malarkey and stuff was just the what? The what? line out throwing right, and stuff okay, like that. Yeah. And because like, you play rugby and then you do all that and it's like when you're thrown in, it's like you thrown in, so trust me, I can make a can actually that myself, do you yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> Without having to look at these big dopey blokes trying to get up in the air and someone lift them, do you know what I mean? It was yeah. a bit like, so so much can go wrong. Yeah. And it was like, I'd been talked up so much about my game around the park and all this sort of stuff. And then suddenly it's like, they've got to find something. So they just kept going on that. Even if it was, I was doing all right in my line out front, mm -hmm. and it was like, well, and they just, you know, all well, the press alike and stuff. So you're like, and I thought, do you know what? I like going rugby league, I think. Really? Yeah, and I, so I looked and then, I was with a lad called Andy Norvey who played for St. Helens and that, and then I'd played a game up there against Oral. While you were still at Northampton? Yeah. And they didn't no, 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 not for okay. the Rugby League, for Northampton okay. against oh, Oral. Okay, yeah, yeah. And that's when they used to have the Rugby League scouts yeah, up there. that's right. And um, we'd had this big punch up and I'd gone over and just punched the coach, their coach, on the side of the pitch. It was just like, it all went off and it was like, right, you're getting it, <laughs> whack, like that. And so it was all, and then my best mate from school, James Mitchell, JJ, he didn't. He just got battered and got sent off. And there was me, me and stuff like that. Oh. And but then the rugby league lads, so they asked me to come up, and the St. Ellens were interested in, in me going up there. So I was going to go up there, and I at the time I had this little clapped out XR2i, 
and it just broke down on the day off and I was going to drive up there and look at signing for St. Helens and stuff. Mm -hmm. Then Frederico Mendes got injured and he was the hooker, starting hooker at Northampton. So I got chucked in, mm. scored two tries and then caught the fullback from behind, Michael Horak. Mm. From, oh, at Leicester. Yeah, yeah. But he was at London Irish then. Was he? Okay. And I caught him from behind, like try saving tackle and all this stuff, yeah. and then got called into the England squad after that, and that was have been two thousand or two thousand and one. Wow. Before I got there. Um, under Clive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then, that was, that was me going in there. Tim took me up there, but then. Um, Where did he take you? Penny Hill Park. Penny Hill Park. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and how was that feeling for you going to Penhill Park, which is like one of the nicest five-star country clubs in well, the UK? Well, the problem is I thought some little twat was trying to nick my bag when I got there because I put my bags down and someone starts walking off and I thought, fuck, what's this all about? Like, he's just fucking picked my bag like, in front of us. So I pushed him and Tim's just gone, oh my God, oh, no. oh my God. <laughs> what, like, the porter? <laughs> yeah. So I thought, I thought that it was like these things like where they come and take your bag yeah. and, and I was just like, what's going on? And they're just like, oh, what is going on here? Like, do you know what I mean? It's like... <laughs> But it just goes to show, like, at Northampton like, with this, like, so when I I started playing for the first team a little bit, and, and that's the thing about Northampton, it's such a good club because, mm -hmm. like, the youth team games, supporters go and watch that. Yeah. And they knew, like, the local talent that was coming yeah. through. And then the Chronicle and Echo done a piece on me, and it's like Steve Walter saved from a life of crime by rugby, and it's all in there. And it's funny... So everyone's been clapping me and stuff, and then suddenly the next couple of weeks that comes out, and then you go in the clubhouse and you can see everyone going, "Oh, yeah, my wallet, what's my, what's my wallet's in there, from the Eastern District and stuff like that." And just, and then of course, then then I changed my name back to Thompson. Why did you change your name back? Because I didn't want that prick's name. Okay. So I got rid of that straight yeah. away and went back to my dad, dad's name, and um, best thing I've done. And but it's funny because people like you supporters are like. Yeah, he looks like like Steve Wold, don't he? He runs like him, and like he plays. But like, obviously, it's different. It's just a different Steve. Tom, uh, it's a different, different name. name. <laughs> yeah, but they've signed another young kid. Do you know what I mean? It's like that. It's like all right. Like, do you know what I mean? It's like oh god. So, um, but we, you know, like I said, the the, the big thing there was the honour of getting your first team tie. Yeah. And my first team tie was against. Oh, it's up north. Filed. Yeah. Okay. In the one of those Cheltenham Gloucester Cup things. Yeah, yeah. And I can remember my mates were getting their ties midweek before I was against like the police and RAF and Cambridge and Oxford. And I was sitting there like, and I was younger, a year, two years, three years younger than someone. And I was yeah. just sitting there thinking, I want that. Yeah. I want that. Why, why aren't I getting that? You know, I'm, I, I can do better now. I know I can and yeah. stuff. And it was like, I was hungry. But then when you speak to it, it was all about like just making me more hungry. And they mm. were saying, and they, we knew it, but we just literally just, Keeping holding your back, back yeah. holding me back, ready to go. Yeah. Tell me about your movements with England. Going in, you went first cap in twin, uh, 2002, yeah. roughly, I think. What What was the movements like that for you? What was it like being in the England setup? What was it like being around all the players you may have looked up up to? What was that feeling like? Or did you not look up to any of the players? You thought, right, just bring it on. Yeah, it's like it's hard because that's where my memory's gone. Yeah, That's where I don't get any... Like when I speak about the younger day, I'll get like excited yeah. and stuff like that. And there's like, it's just bizarre. There's just nothing there. So me going there, turning up in camp and all this lot, it's just talking to my mates and what, what they used to say. Yeah. And um, like my mate, mate for Eves was like, he's sort of, he's like my memory bank really mm. for that time. <clears throat> and he, he said, oh, you, you, you playing at Twickenham and you were going to come out for a couple of beers. He said, but it's quite funny because we had your car and stuff. So I was the youngest. So I came back and all my mates were at the game. You know what I'm saying? And then it was literally, I got upstairs for the first beer and he just went, you're not drink, drink, drinking tonight. So what do you mean? He said, and they're all drunk. And he just passed me, went, you're a driver tonight and you're the youngest. No That's notions, it. Don't, no notions. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You're the youngest, yeah. you drive, you make the cup of tea. I went on my days off when I got home, cup of tea. You mm. have to make the cups of tea for all them and stuff because I was the youngest. Was, what was it like playing with some of those players, though? What was it like playing with Jono and uh, <clears throat> Lewis and all, all the players who were there who were big faces? Like I said, for me, like, was, there's nothing there with that. Like, don't well, literally, get, literally nothing. zilch. No, like, I can remember playing at the Saints in 2000, just 2000, with Pat Lamb, yeah. Gary Pagel, mm. Federico Mendes. So we had practically a 60-stone front row when we were playing then. 
and there's me, Gary and Freddie. Yeah. And then we had this other Skelso was just, just as big, if not bigger. And, you know, he was just massive. And then, but then that's where it starts going. So when I spoke to the specialist, it's like, I don't understand like what's, and he said, well, what it's like, it's like where your brain was damaged at those periods of time. Yeah. It's like having like a camera. So your camera's there, but it's got no SD card in. Yeah. So it's not, and now like some of my mates back then have spoke to me and read my book and yeah. stuff like that. They've sort of gone, do you know it was so obvious now that you suffer from brain injuries? Yeah. Mood swings, yeah. tiredness, where you were, like just flipping out, doing stuff, just, and they used to think like, oh, that I was just a bit mad. Yeah. And that now it's just like, it's wow. totally obvious of what. Yeah. What, so you don't remember being at the World Cup? No. You don't remember winning that final? No. Don't don't remember being in Australia. I was with Lewis um, and Ben. And that documentary. Year, yeah. yeah. And Lewis, bless him, is pulling out like pictures of us in rib places and coffee shops and stuff. Yeah. And it's like, I wouldn't have a clue, not a clue. And it's like, I'm like, and I'll get no emotional attachment to it, nothing. And it's like in the documentary, when I, that garage I go into is yeah. not my garage. It makes it look like it's my, but it's not, yeah. it's my mate. So I had to phone people because they were like, oh, can we have some of your, excuse me, some of your um, memorabilia. memorabilia. Yeah. I was like, I ain't got it. Well, where's, where's your medal? I was like, I ain't got it. I was like, oh, where's your MBA? And I'm like, I ain't got it. And they said, where is it? I went, I, I don't know. So I had to phone my mates up, say, look, have you got any of my stuff and that? And then suddenly Heaths went, oh yeah, I've got a bag of yours in the garage and that's this bag yeah. and it's like got a few jerseys in it. And and as we recorded these missus, went, oh, there's like an EA, like one of those bags yeah. that you pull like that over there. So, and that's when we open it. And that's why the medals like was rusty and all that sort of, and it's just been in their garage. And it's funny because they leave their garage open all the time <laughs> anyway. So it's like, and it's all there. And it was like, oh, okay. So that, that World Cup medal, does that mean anything to you? No. It's like when it all the news broke and you're there and you're watching it on TV, it's just like, just a fat, ugly bloke there playing too. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's just like a bit slimmer than I am now. And it's like, it, it's just like I'm watching England now. Yeah. And it's like, there's no, no sort of feeling or anything. Whereas I talk about like East Midlands yeah, and stuff like that. Yeah, I can see it. Love I can it. Hear it. Love yeah, it. Yeah. But with that, there's like there's, you know, it's true. I feel like a phony. You no, know? because I was talking to people about people who ask me questions, and it's like I go through. I was going through emotion because when I was a kid, you know him, mm. Trevor Morley, mm. broke my heart. Yeah. Um, he was at the Cobblers. Like, yeah. Hey, was he? Yeah, he was legend at the Cobblers. Quality player, yeah. We won the fourth division yeah, yeah, and stuff yeah, like yeah. that with yeah. him and that. And he was like, brilliant, loved it. So I waited for um, a signature mm. after one of the games. And I was like, oh, Mr. Moore. And he just went, oh, fuck off, not another one. No. And he was like a bit, and do you know what? I always thought to myself, if that, if I ever make anything myself, I never want to be like that. Yeah, yeah. And I, you know, I hope I haven't been, and I try not to be, mm. and I just always try and give people time yeah. and stuff like that. Because, you know, what we do is, well, f fun really it's mm. like PE sort of thing and mm. it was hard yeah. but you know I, I love doing proper jobs like 12 hour shifts yeah. on the water pipes and stuff like that so yeah. how did your life change then I know you can't remember that sort of period how did your life change financially you've gone all of a sudden you're playing for England you're playing for Northampton proper contracts it's growing and growing I can't remember what you were getting paid back then can you remember how much you were getting paid for per England game was it 15 grand a game no, it was less than that. Was it less, was it? Yeah, yeah. No, Tens? No, yeah, something like that, I think. And you had 70 odd caps. Did you find that your lifestyle was improving? Did you find that you were... That's, that's what I mean. Like, for me now, it's like there's like an empty void there. Like, of all that... Stuff. Stuff, yeah. Like, it's... There's pictures of me with cars and pictures... And I'm like... You know, now I drive a little clapped-out A-class. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I love it. Just bobbing around and, yeah. and stuff. And, and it's like... You know, I just don't get... It's like I've seen, I see pictures and it's like, it's not me. So I, I get like no emotional yeah. attachment, attachment to it at all. Is it just literally? It's like, you know, when people say about me going to France, like I sort of, it's like I woke up in France for a bit and suddenly like, what am I here for? I don't know what, I don't know why I'm here. And they said, you'd literally, my head just went and it's like, I'm leaving. I was, I was, I was in three or four year contract at Northampton and I've just gone, I'm leaving. 
But you literally one day said, get me out of here. Yeah. I'm going to France. Yeah. And everyone's like, where's this come from? And it was like, and that's, it's all that. What year was it you moved to France, roughly? About two seven, I two think. Seven. And what was the reason then? Was it the pressure? Was everything building up, did you find? Did you find that after the World Cup, did you go to the 2007 World Cup? No, because I broke my neck. Broke your neck just before, yeah. And that's the thing, like, I don't, I don't know that period, like that period, I yeah. didn't, it's, it's just bizarre because I'm talking about it now and it's mm. just like I'm trying to think of someone else's story. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Okay. Just, and and piece it together. Yeah. And it's, you know. Well, can you remember why you decided to go to France? No. And that's why in the book, uh, Paul Grayson was talking. It was like, apparently my head just went and I, I kicked off and I don't know what, just, I just, just went on my mouth. I'm not, like, it was just, apparently my life was all sort of normal and then suddenly just, everything just exploded yeah and looking at it now you know we can you can see sort of the Patterns, periods, yeah. yeah what was that like going to france who who teed you up to go to france who was who was there for you did you have a house waiting for you was there a contract waiting for you can you remember no that's nothing like you know I, there's someone around at simon gillam um i can remember him from breathe but i can't remember anything it was just like like I said one time, just got, and then I had a massive low, and I was thinking about fuck, like what's going on. I, I'm just gonna. I had my shotguns and stuff then because I was hunting, and I just thought I'm just gonna do myself here. I just, it, I just did this big like what's going on. Like imagine sort of waking up, and when I spoke to the specialist, it's like well that's when perhaps your brain, because of the injury, and you weren't trained and you weren't playing the information sort of thing. So that you know it sparked like a little bit of a. Mm. memory sort of thing and then suddenly I started playing again and it just went bad again so you were prepared to take your own life with a shotgun yeah wow. and just like and the reason didn't, I didn't have the cartridges upstairs they were in like the vault downstairs and stuff and it was just like and then like I said then France has just just gone again like that that went and then you said it, it went but in, in France didn't you break your neck no, no, I've, I've done it before at Northampton. Before at Northampton, okay. And then I came back in France. So when you broke your neck, that's when you retired? Yeah. Yeah, but then you ended up in France. Yeah, because apparently I've, I've, I'd already signed to go to France yeah. before I broke my neck. So I was okay. like, I'm out of here. And then suddenly a few weeks later, I broke my neck and then went to France. Let's not, let's not gloss it. over bro uh, break your neck. Where did you break your neck? Uh, C5-6 had a disc replacement. It, it's called and then so they literally just take it out and then put a ball and socket joint in there and stuff like that so and then you know it was what were the consequences what what what, what they saying was going to happen what were they telling you at that time that's what that's what I've, i don't remember you know yeah it. okay and this is the big thing like i like that's no like i had the reunion northampton reunion the other week i got invited to in london it's like I meet up with some of the lads that I play youth with and mm. I'll see on LinkedIn and mm. Twitter and stuff like that, lads that I played East Midlands with and I see, and I see them and it gives me like excitement. Yeah, yeah. Whereas it sounds bad, the Northampton ones, it's not like I don't like people and that, I just don't know them. And I was just thinking, why am I gonna go and sit in London with people going, oh, you must remember this. Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh yeah, I know, you must remember this. Yeah. And it's like, a lot of times I just go on, yeah, 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 oh yeah, yeah. that was a good time. And I'm thinking, I haven't got a scoop what you're yeah. talking about. and. My life now has just sort of shrunk massively into like my little safe areas yeah. of doing stuff. And um, and that's just how, you know, it's all just sort of changed really. So when you went to Breathe, you carried on your contract even though you'd broken your neck? I started coaching there and okay. working for the company. So they honoured it and said, look, come, come well, out It's not even a contract, no, they gave me a working contract. Okay, which meant? I was working for the Dirichwal group who owned the rugby yeah. club. Okay, and now did you enjoy that? Or were you frustrated that you wanted to get back on the pitch again? Well, I was 150 kilos, 154 kilos. I put a bit of weight on. 154? Yeah. When you're out there? Yeah. Jeez. And then, and then it was like, right, I got the all clear. I just went for a checkup and got the all clear on my neck. Yeah. And they said, right, it's fine. Like it's, it's, it's more than fine. It's brilliant. Like the yeah. way it's done, it's, you know, that's, yeah. And now people, other people have played with it or something like that. So, right, fine. 
but I was 154 kilos. So I started, started to train. Yeah. It was just like, pff, bloody hell. Yeah. So then in six weeks, I lost 30 kilos, I just over 30 kilos in six weeks. I had a, um, what's his name? Bernard Four, I think his name was. Yeah. And he was like ex marathon champion or time holder for France. Yeah. And he was like a specialist in triathlon. Mm between bike and run. Mm. So he came in Brilliant. and just done one on one for me. And like I said, I literally, everyone said, oh, he, after my first session, he was like, he can never be a, a professional rugby man again. Yeah. And then six weeks later, I was like, Phew. ready to go again. Yeah. Amazing. Did you get an insurance claim for your neck? Yeah, I had to pay it all back. So you had to make a decision, so I'd pay all that insurance money back just to get you back on the rugby field again. Yeah. And it's funny because my mates tell me like, they're like you idiot I said why they said because you went to France you took it and then the euro and the pound yeah flipped like yeah. currency money on, so I ended up losing everything really but did you think about that before Do you think you know what I don't care I want to get back playing rugby yeah and also like the the drive I've always had a drive in me it, like, that Keith Picton yeah to get out 50 caps and what cap? Do you remember what, roughly what caps you were on before you went? Forty-seven. To oh, really? So you had three to go and get. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And then when you started playing again at Breathe, was it like, oh my god, I've got this back, I can do this? Did you contact? Were people keeping an eye on you? Was Clive keeping an eye on you? Or yeah. Or no, Jono, it's Jono, Jono, Jono Jono and that. On you, yeah. and um, but when, like, when I came back, that's when, because training there was just mental as well. In, in terms uh, yeah, of yeah, talking because Alex Popham was there, yeah. So of course he suffered from this as well. And then when he's talking, he was saying like, we used to do full contact on a Friday, yeah. day before the match. They used to just bring in the opposition, and then we used to just, and then once again, memory's gone. Yeah. And it's like, pff. where do you think all this brain damage came from? Was it? Do you think it's coming from playing on the Saturday or do you think it was the training at Northampton and the training in England? And It's the training side, you know. They've, when I spoke spoke to them, it's like they say, they call it sub-concussions. Yeah. So I had the big concussions that knocked me unconscious, which I had quite a few of, like laying there and they're like, oh, don't worry about it, you just have a little sleep, it'll be all right in a minute. Or you're hitting the, the scrum machine and then as the pressure comes off, you pass out. So you sort of hit the floor and everyone else carries on playing and you're sort of there on the floor just yeah. looking like that. So they, they reckon that it's equivalent of like 80,000 to 100,000 sub-concussions they've tried to work out that we would have had because we'd be doing contact training hours on end in the week. Whereas now World Rugby have turned around on the back of us coming out saying they haven't changed it to compulsory, but they've they've advised fifteen minutes of contact a week, and we were doing hours. Yeah, hours. So, you know, you yeah. do you know what I mean? You, <laughs> mm. it was literally it was legalized violence in the week. Yeah, and it was like right, you lot, we're paying you. It's the full time job, so you're going you're going to do full time hours. Yeah, and that was the thing. Like the owners and everyone really was very much like you're not having an easy life because it's like the thing you you've got to be there. We've got to be seen working hard. Yeah. You've got to be seen doing that and. How was it for you then in training? Were you like, you know, you're a tough man, you're a tough man on the pitch and off the pitch with a big heart, but actually on the pitch in training, were you like, no one's gonna nick my spot. I don't care what I've got to do, I'm gonna run through brick walls. Yeah. I'm gonna, if I've got to be violent in training, I'll be violent in training. Yeah, you, everyone's got to, uh, training was probably more violent than Match. matches. Yeah. And, you know, I was always the youngest, so, so I was always had that to prove and then I think with my insecurity sort of that kept me going because I like, other people had other things I I didn't this is like this is that and it was like the, like I said it wasn't the game that I was in love with it was like that bit around the lads and yeah. I was thinking like you see people that finish it's like the police and stuff like that you come out of it and you're no longer part of it mm. and it was that when I was a young kid, kid like Fear, it was, it was like of yeah. losing yeah. my family really yeah. thinking oh, if I'm not part of this like who's going to have me yeah and that was the the big thing for me was like losing that and it was like if I lost that what what do you have can you give me some examples of what training was like at Northampton in England Northampton's early like what well, one training session we've done a hundred live scrums in one session in one session a hundred live scrums and that's not it weren't those days now where you sort of touch and hold yeah, yeah. where you like bang, bang. Bang, headbutt, bang. Yeah. We had to do a hundred. 
you look at it now, you think, you know, you know we just wouldn't allow that. Yeah. Um, and then there'd be like contact sessions where you just, you got the big bags and they're up against the wall and, and you'd be rucking into them. Or when we were younger, it was, we'd, we'd have to play for the second team or something on like the Monday night. But then it would be away, I don't know, Manchester or somewhere like that. Come back. So you're not getting back to early hours and then suddenly you've got to be back in to be cannon fodder for the first team. So it's like sometimes you'd have to lay over the bag and they'll just be running around full pelt, kneeing you and and doing it. You know, you you you've, you, you would have seen all that. You know what I mean? You're literally that, yeah. laying there and yeah. letting them, like you've got to lay there as long as you can and let them kick you and stuff like that to make it hard for them to get the ball. Was there ever a point that you wanted to speak up and go, this ain't right? Or did you just think this is the, this is the norm? I don't know any different. Yeah, this, you know, when... <clears throat> they were saying like with injuries and stuff, you know, say you, you sort of get knocked out or something like that. It's like, oh, that's right. There's, there's some painkiller. Have some people like, just thank God you haven't done your knee or your hamstring. Do you know what I mean? It's like, and you'd be there like, oh, I've got a headache or something like that. And they're like, oh, no, no, it's fine. That'll go. You know, don't worry about that. You know, can you run? Yeah, I can run. Yeah, you can play. Yeah. And did you find that you wanted to carry on playing because you were going to get a bonus as well? It sounds like I never... And I was just saying, I never ever thought about money. Okay. It wasn't even in your. No. Okay. No, like it's. It was more about putting that first team shirt on. Yeah. And the money will follow. Yeah, like it's just, you know, playing there and like the adrenaline with your mates. Mm. And it was like I think it was constantly driving for people to say, play, you know, he's done well there, and he, do you know what I mean, it's like that praise and stuff. I just think I just. And it's even like now, I'm, I'm a bit like that now, do you know what I mean, with what I do? I just want to try and do everything the best the best I can. Mm. Did you ever ever have a mentor in there to help you financially, to say, look, you need to put some money away, put some money into houses? No, or Nothing at all. So nothing at the club? No, I didn't have anything at all. And of course, didn't have that structure around me. And that, so, you know, it was just... Were the England training camps just as tough? It was funny because I talked to my mates about it and they were saying like I'd come back on a Thursday on the day off and I'd just be on the sofa like I can't play I, I, I just can't physically play on Saturday. What so give me an example give me an example of a season for you at your peak if you can remember that you're going to have your Northampton Northampton then you have your Six Nations how long would you be away at training camp of England if it's a Six Nations or then you go on tour in the summer how many games would you be roughly playing in that season? Well, I think in those days there wasn't the break either. So you used mm. to there were breaks in the Six Nations, but you used to come back and play for your club. Yeah. So you'd you'd play like all the time, and then you'd have summer tours. So you go on the summer tours, and you come back in, and and that's what I was saying to my mum. I said, surely I'd like got rested, and they said, no, you didn't. They yeah. said you used to come back, and the clubs used to get you because they'll say, oh, we've got some new players coming after the tour. Why don't you come and meet them? And yeah. And then they said that was you back in then. Like you'd never have a holiday and never yeah. doing. You'd just be back in the club thinking, you know, they've signed a new new worker. Like you'd be like, fuck, it, I've got to get back in there. Yeah. Like I can't. I can't even give them a friendly game. I've got yeah. to be able to. Do you know what I mean? I've just and I'd never, you know, I'd never back myself. They said that you'd constantly be thinking like I've got to play, train, you know, train and have my ribs injected. They were saying one time, and I even went, went to England and played with them apparently and. And that's how I was, I was playing games and stuff. And it was just like that constant of, you've got to do it. Because they're like, well, we need you to play. Because if not, you know, He's contracts are coming up and oh, all okay. this sort of stuff. And so they were, did you find they were playing mind games with you? Yeah, the mind games, yeah, all the time. And looking back now, you're thinking, hold on, mate, you were playing mind games. Like, how dare you do that? No, not... Or was it just it just what it was? Yeah, the thing is, you got you got players that need mind games and you've got players that don't, players that need the belly rubbing, you got, you know, it's yeah. all those different characters of, of people and mm. stuff and it, in all walks of life you've got that. Who's your main competitor at Northampton Saints and England? Can you remember there's a couple of faces? Who's it at Northampton who's a competitor to you? Your main competitor coming through? Dylan Hartley? No, he came after. Yeah. Did he put pressure on you to nick your spot? I don't think so because I'm sorry. I can't really remember him being there. Yeah. I think he came right at the end. Okay. But it would have been. Like not being for that would have been brilliant for yeah. me. You know, you know. How would you react on something like that, knowing someone's trying to nick your spot in training? Just go for it, don't you? Just it's like the only time I got sent off was against my best mate in, in the form. Rugby. 
because he blocked my kick down and battered him. Are you bad? <laughs> and then we both got sent off. Did you? Yeah. Um, but that's like, it's weird now. I've I've sort of lost it a bit now on medication I'm on. I haven't got the drive that I had and stuff. But even before that, like when we were in Cyprus, we had a swimming pool. Mm. And my, well, she would have been six then or something like that. Mm. She's just like me, Seren. And we're so competitive. Like me and her are just... Same. And we'd pull each other's hair. Mm. We'd like literally scratch, bite, just to beat each other in a swimming contest. <laughs> and uh, and you know that's that's just the way I was. Yeah, With everything yeah. I'd done, mm. I wanted to you know do well. And I was never the most skillful. It's funny because I'm teaching football now. I think I think you were. I think you put yourself down there. I think you were a really skillful player. So. And you're quick. And you're fast. And you're as hard as nails. You had you had you had, you had the whole package. That's why England had you in there for ten years. But I see it as like. You know, you know, boys can do stuff on the ball and all this stuff. Mm. Whereas it's like, I'm one of them. Even with my daughter, I coach my daughter football and stuff. I'm like, and she, she, I said, that have, have fun, do mm. those skills, but you're never mm. going to do them on the pitch, mm. really. So you're better off learning to kick with your left foot, yeah, as well as your right foot, rather than natural. doing all these. Yeah. And she's like, oh look at my new rainbow kick and all this sort of stuff, <laughs> and all, and I'm like, I haven't got a clue what that is, but you know, and so it's, it's quite funny, like you know, with rugby like that, I was. I try and train my skills when mm. I was younger. It's like, right, what do I have to do? Mm. Well, I'll do that. There's no point being there doing. Did you know what a concussion was? No. Okay. Concussion. What I thought a concussion was yeah. when we were younger was totally knocked unconscious, yeah. ambulance, hospital. Yeah. Same. Do you know what I mean? That's yeah. that's what I thought it was. So yeah. them saying, oh no no, like you, you're fine. You haven't got. You, you can't be concussed because you know you're not in hospital. Yeah. But you might be staggering all over the pitch yeah. and stuff like that. Oh no, you're fine, you're fine. And that's you know, like you like you just said, that's what it was to yeah. everyone. Yeah. Whereas now looking at it, there's been history for over a hundred years of what this does, mm. and it was just, it's just been, you know, I'd say hid or mm. do you know what I mean, and not advised properly. Yeah. You know, you had Paul McCory, who's the Australian like a specialist yeah. who's been done for plagiarism yeah. and everything like do you know what I mean and he was on the, one of the main advisory boards and, st and it's the stuff that's come out has just been and when it's been shocking isn't it yeah when you know two and a half years ago is it or three years even when we first came out people were saying you're disgusting so that's my belly that's dinner. good food that was that was dinner last oh, night, mate, wasn't it? Yeah. what a feed up that was mate. shout out to Guildhall Tavern by the way yeah thank honest, you seriously <laughs> like that was special. I love it? my food. So, um, remember, how many dishes they put in front of us? About sixteen dishes yeah. all in time. <laughs> but like the fish and everything, yeah. I've never. That's you know, quality. So yeah. when you so let's go let's, let's let's go back there. So breathe. You 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 were injured. You had to pay back all your in, uh, insurance money. You started playing again. When did you leave breathe and come back? And what club did you go to? Um, I went to Leeds. Yeah. And it's weird. So I could go to. Is that where you retired? Well, no, I retired at Wasps, believe it or not. So I signed Leeds and I'd done the World Cup, 2000, signed for Leeds. Yeah. 2011 then was New Zealand was under New Zealand. John Owen Lewis. And I signed a three-year deal at Wasps. Yeah. And I came back and literally, like, the first week back, I think it was, I broke my neck again. So I've hit a scrum machine and done all the back of my neck. And then that was it. Were you insured? Not fully insured, no, no. So I, that's when I moved to Dubai. So that's when you were like, right, I'm out of here. I need to stop playing rugby now. And you hung up your boots Just, with 74 caps. Yeah. And what was that feeling like to say, right, I'm done? I think it was more relief, I think. Okay. And then I met Steph. I'd met Steph at the, at the World Cup. Yeah. She's working for Emirates. And we were there and, you know, it was just, I met her and then suddenly it was like, right, it just felt right. And I thought, do you know what? I just left London. I had a flat there. I just said to lads who were standing there, just you pay the mortgage and whatever you make on top, keep for yourself sort of thing. But as long as that mortgage gets paid, I'm fine. And yeah. then I just went off. And then- What with Steph straight to Dubai? Yeah, I met Steph there. And then this was like the January or something like that. Mm. And why Dubai? That's where she was. Where's, that's where she was based, was yeah. there? You're like, right, go out of there, change your lifestyle. How was that like for you? You end up doing how many years out there in the end? 
what was that? 2011? Seven. Six, seven years, Six, seven yeah. years, yeah. How was that like for you? I wanted to get out when I first got there. I hated it. And she hid my passport and kept me there. So I was yeah. a bit like a prisoner. Yeah. <laughs> Five-star prisoner. Yeah. <laughs> um, Why did you hate Dubai? It was just... I'm, I'm more of a pub. Let's wipe your feet on the way out because you want, don't want to dirty the curb. Yeah. When you order a drink there and everything comes with fireworks and stuff like that, yeah. and do you mean everyone's got to be punty and mucking? Yeah, 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 and stuff and that. And then I met some really good people, like you know, um, and I started trying to get like a normal life, mm. like rather than just going out loads and yeah. socialising and, and doing. It's like right now you got to get into a real sort of life. And I met some teachers and stuff like that. It was it was brilliant. Do you know what I mean because they were the normal side to yeah. it. And then it was like, right, I've got to start working. And I met a, a chap called Mike McGeever, who's, he gets, I say he's like my dad. He says he's like my big brother, because mm. it's like, I don't know, about 14, 15 years. Mm. I was like, well, you could have had me. You could have. Be honest. <laughs> you, are, you are from up north. <laughs> and uh, and he's just been, like I, like I said, I've been really lucky in my life to have things sort of go so badly, but then have at certain points, like Keith Picton in my yeah. life, and now to have Mike in my life yeah. is just changed. You know, he had, he had cancer last year, and I've never seen anyone battle it. So yeah. you know, he had the bag and everything. He'd message me the next day. Oh, you never I had one of those nights. Yeah. Bag opened, bed full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, yeah. Thanks for that, thanks Mike. Yeah, yeah, thanks. <laughs> but he's like, you know, he's. Did he help you out out there? Did he get your job? Did yeah, he... yeah, yeah. So he was like, Steve. There's three lots of people out here. Brilliant. He said, there's. Oh, what is it? There's the people that want something. Yeah. There's people that are trying to be something, and there's mm -hmm. people that have made it. Yeah. And he says they're the ones that just be careful who you sort of surround with, yourself yeah. with, and that. Yeah. And you know, and I, I just got into the construction world out there. You know, I, I was doing building before when I was younger, and and just loved it to be honest. Yeah. That that sort of going out, getting a deal, yeah. and and stuff. But then it just. How was your mind? when you were out there? Did you notice that there was, there was changes in? Well, this is the thing, when we when I was there, like I'd, towards the end, I'd start going to meetings and stuff, and I didn't really need a diary, like I'd literally knew where all the meetings was, and I'd just move, go around from meeting to meeting, come out, and it, you know, we're discussing, because we'd done everything from Shell and Core, so we'd have the MEP department, we'd, we'd have joinery factories, mm. we had everything, it was like brilliant, and, and when you're selling a good product and stuff like that, it's, it's easy, yeah, do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. It's good and it's all about the relationships and you know, we're there and we're buzzing, it's going well and then suddenly I'll be coming out of meetings thinking, what just went on there? I can't remember what went on there. And then I started missing the odd meeting. I was thinking, this, oh, I don't know what. And then socially I stopped not wanting to go out and not see people and I started to sort of go to like a cafe and just sit there by myself all yeah. day and just like hide away and stuff and just and it was bizarre I was just constantly like getting worse and worse yeah. like I find myself going out with Steph and that and we'd go drinks around someone's house or something like that and suddenly I'd be sat in the corner like just not wanting to talk to anyone whereas before I was like yeah let's yeah. have a laugh yeah, let's do yeah, that yeah. and then suddenly it was like right and then my performance started going Mike had left Dubai as well yeah. um, and I don't know exactly what went on because that's when my memory started yeah. going again and and suddenly it was like I was there just thinking what well, I've just lost I don't know what's going on yeah. like, I just and suddenly I'm not performing how I should perform and stuff like work so then if you haven't got a work visa you can't live there your kids can't go to school things are expensive yeah. so suddenly like right I'm gonna have to move and we literally said right where should we go and we weren't ready to come back to the UK so we looked at the map and said right what's between and we see Cyprus and we went right let's go there so in a matter of three weeks we'd moved thing rented a house on the internet a uh, friend of a friend had someone there in Cyprus so they went and checked the house said yeah there's got doors on there's windows yeah, it's, it looks all right <laughs> so we turned up and that was it with three young kids there and and it was all right there. I met a real good bloke, Pete, there, who's, who, once again, he sort of saved me there as well. Mm. And I used to go out, but I'd be sat in the garden, drop the kids off at, I don't know, half seven, I think it is there. They start quite early there. And then I'd, I'd go to the gym sometimes, and 
and I'd sit downstairs on the bike in the dark room by myself, just like no lights on and stuff. And then I'd go home and I'd sit in the garden and if kids weren't there, I'd be like, all my missus weren't there, I was just, I'd be in tears, just thinking what's going on. And I'd just be, I just didn't know what was going on. And people, I had money owed to me and people weren't paying the money. It was like a nightmare. Like, like I said, I got down to about four pounds 76 in the, in the bank account. And then one of my good mates, I messaged him said, look, can you speak to our other mate who run the company that owes me the money? He went, sorry, sorry, brother. Sometimes you just got to look after yourself. I don't no. speak, and it was like, mm, all right. So then I spoke to another mate, and he got the payment done. Okay. And then it got to the point like, we need to go home. We need to get. So we're talking here, 2018, 19. Aren't we? Yeah, so yeah. And did you did you feel in yourself something that was getting worse when you were out in Cyprus? I just I couldn't. I just didn't understand. Like I, was, like I said, I was just emotional. I just just didn't want to speak to people. It was just, I don't know. And then, but suddenly in my mind, like that's when like with Steph and the kids, I'll be talking about stuff and they were like, oh, you, you've said this or you promised to do this. I'm like, no, I didn't. I said, and it weren't until the kids started going, oh, they can talk properly and they say, oh, dad, no, no, you, you did say. And I was like, really? And then you end up, well, I end up getting more angry yeah. with myself, but you end up like shouting at everyone else. Yeah. Because suddenly, like you do, you go, I was scared, yeah. And then sort of because I just didn't have a clue what was going on. Then I came back here, and it was like a bit of a rejuvenation period. And up up in up in Cheshire Way, I always say this might not be good, but I always say you know I believe in charity, so I married a scouser. <laughs> <laughs> but not that much to live in Liverpool, so yeah. I, I went near there. Half, halfway else. Uh, but I was, I'd say, like, I do love Liverpool, going in there and yeah. stuff and that. But, you know, just so we have a laugh. And and um, I, I was taking the kids to school one day, and then this bloke, Gary, um, came, and he's, he's, oh, how are you doing, mate? Yeah, he just started, one of these blokes just chatting to your old boy. Yeah. And um, fit as a fiddle. And... He said, well, if you ever want any work, we've got a, a water company and stuff like that. We just dig out the big pipes and all this sort of stuff. If, if you want to do it. And I was like, yeah, right, yeah, I'll come do it. And he was like, oh, really? I was like, yeah, yeah, I'd love to. Like, because I I was just struggling, to be yeah. honest. I was like, Phew. so I'd done the old poker face. Like, yeah, 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 yeah I'll do that. Like, I was just thinking, <laughs> this is brilliant. Like, and, yeah. and my missus said it really perked me up because I sort of working out on the tools with yeah, the lads, brilliant. digging holes and stuff like that. They're fixing the big aqueducts and mm. stuff like that. And and the lads there as well, you know, you, it's hard like in offices now with yeah. how polite you have to be all the yeah, time yeah, and what yeah. you have to say and yeah. that. And, and also like, so I was there and all of a sudden, like I'd, I'd be going up the van though, the van would be sometimes half a mile away or whatever. And you'd walk to the van to get some, and I'm thinking, what am I coming here for? I wouldn't have a clue what I was trying to get. And then Alex Popham, called me yeah. and said, you know, I'm going through this. And he started telling me on, I was thinking, all right, yeah, yeah. And I said, oh, so I went back home and talked to Steph about the conversation of how he'd been out cycling, forgot where he was and all this sort of stuff. Mm. And like, he was on the pitch, absolute arsehole, proper Welsh yeah. arsehole, off yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. One of the Lovely. nicest blokes you'll ever Lovely, meet. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, just. Lunatic on the pitch. Yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. But he just, yeah. but then he said like, he start, he was getting like issues off it. Yeah. And it was like, bloody hell. And so, so straight away, that was an alarm bell for me. Cause I'm thinking, well, you're like a really nice bloke. I'm a bit of an arsehole at times, yeah. so I'm gonna have to be careful here, sort of thing. And yeah. So we're there, and and then I spoke to Steph, and Steph was like, "Can you not see who that is?" And I was like, "No, what?" And she went, "That's exactly you." Wow. And I was thinking, oh. so then I started. I said, "Look, go for some tests." So because of COVID and stuff, they'd done like a test over the phone. You had like an interview for an hour and a half, yeah. and they were doing stuff, and then it was like, "Yeah, you've got problems here." And they said it's you know so we need to get the proper tests and scans yeah. done. So I was like, okay. So I had a doctor come to my house, and uh, and it's weird, it's like because like when I'm talking, like, I'm all right if I'm talking about stuff, and then other times I just go off. Mm. And they, um, I was there, and it was like a memory test thing where she says twenty words, and then you have to sort of say the words back to her. And then she'll tell the words again, and you say it back, and then you do another mind game, and they say the 20, the 20 words again. But it was like, I was saying it, and like the top score was like four. Mm. And then I, it was just it was just going. It was yeah. like one, two's fine, and then three comes in, and it's like wobbly, then four comes, and then the others go, and yeah. then it just keeps, and I was, 
And I can remember that was the first time when I thought, I'm really, I'm really in the shit here. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm, I'm in trouble. Mm. And I can remember breaking down, apologising. She's like, don't, don't apologise. And Steph's nan had just passed away of dementia. Mm. And the woman interviewed Steph separately. And when she went, I didn't know this at the time, but Steph had interviewed and said, turned around to her and went, it's really weird. It's like, he's like his, my nan who's, yeah. who had dementia. Mm. She said, it's, it's just like that. But I know it's not because he's too young. And mm. then it was like a sort of thing. And then of course it came through and we had to have a phone call after the scans. Um, and that's really like when I went for the scans, you go for like in the big machine, yeah. like the old, duh, 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 yeah. and it's, I thought, what is it? It's three letters, I can't remember. It's not MRI, I know that it's a different one, more yeah. in-depth one. Yeah. And when you go in, they have to screw your head down and they tell you not to touch the sides. I don't mean true, if you had one, it, you're, you're all right. If I have one, I'm like literally yeah. like, and the thing is I said to him, I'll go to sleep. And they went, and they laughed. They went, no, oh, no, you went. I went, I'll go to sleep. And literally as I'm going in, I, they sort of wake me up again. And I oh, Steve, can you wake up? You need to be awake for this moment for the brain things to be mm. working with. I'm like, oh, yeah, you're right. And then suddenly, oh, Steve, Steve, you've fallen asleep again, like over the microphone. Mm. And they were like, that is so impressive. We've never known someone that can sleep <laughs> just like that. And they're just straight up. Like, <laughs> and they're just like, I said, I told you. And they went, yeah, but we'd never thought yeah. it would be like that. And and then it took a few weeks after that to get the results. And it was like a phone call. And I can remember saying um, to Richard, the solicitor, he said, look, they've got your results. They want to speak to you tomorrow. And I said, have you seen them? He said, I've seen a bit of it, yeah. And I said, tell me. And he's like, Steve, it's all the information the doctor should tell you. And mm. I said, I just said, look, mate, I said, I just want to know, like, just tell me simply, is it bad or not? And he was like, yeah, it's quite bad. I was like, right, fine. And then, so it was one of them, right, yeah, got it. Because all the way before that, it's, I'm absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with me. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, then there's other times I think, oh my God, I've got it, I've got it. Yeah. And then suddenly, oh no, I haven't. So then to actually get a diagnosis yeah. was like, and the specialist sat down and he was like, you know, it's, he said, it's quite bad. He said, look, you're looking at the scans and on the scans, if you've got a pinprick of yellow, it's a significant brain injury. And on my scans, there's like big yellow slugs really? going through the middle and stuff. And then like explain, I was like, well, why is it in the middle and not mm. on the front and the back? Cause mm. you think where it hits the skull. Yeah. And I said, cause it hits one way hits the other way then the brain shrinks yeah so it literally that's where it causes the damage and then with that where it started and it's and Steph went oh if you see someone with a one-off ac accident with all this damage and he was like oh yeah so she sort of relaxed went, oh okay he went no they're dead if you get that much damage in one go oh my God. it was like a head-on car crash yeah. you're dead and this is the difference between like the big concussions and these sub concussions yeah. the killers that yeah come from training and stuff like that. Yeah. And so we're there and it's like, say I'd, I'd done this 80,000 times to my arm, mm. that bit there would be dead, mm. but my arm would learn to work, work around yeah. it because it's taking yeah. so long. Whereas if you just do one bang, that damage, your yeah. arm would just be gone. Yeah. And that's like, what's that in simple terms? Mm. Cause I need everything simple mm. even before that. Mm. So, you know, you understand it's like, and I can remember with Steph and I like, bless her she's like so tough and stuff but that night she was in bed and she's like got upset and she's like she's like because we, we always like say about growing old together yeah. and stuff like that. she's like it's not gonna happen now is it and then suddenly it was like Pff. and then you know we'd licked our wounds i think for i've licked my wounds a lot longer and that and whereas you know there's times where we just use dark humor as well you know my, my kids are just hilarious yeah. and uh and Sren, the older one she there's times when I'm there and I'm stuttering and I'm looking and I'm thinking, I know your name, I know your name, I know your name, but it just doesn't come to me. And yeah. I'm like there and she'll go, three guesses or it's a fiver. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Quality. Just like, 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 right, okay. <laughs> or, or you got like slow, we call her pony, our eight year old. She's like, you say, oh, have you done your homework? Mm. Oh, I forgot. Remember that time when I walked into the cupboard door and that, yeah, I think I've got dementia. <laughs> And you're like, you Quality. little shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're like, already. And we're like, but they're straight away, they're like, put yeah. it, and you're like, right. And, but then the big one, and I love, and she still does it to this day now, um, Sassy. She's the, um, what was she, six now? 10, 
How old are the three kids? Ten, four, ten, four. eight, six, and four. All living with you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and oh. they're there, and um, was it they like Sassy? It must have all come out in the news, and they were at the school. They came back, and Sassy, she's one of them. I love it's, it's good because it's like you have to earn her cuddles. Yeah. Sren comes and cuddles me sometimes. Yeah. Like, what do you want? <laughs> do you know what I mean? So like, <laughs> Pony's like just loving, caring yeah. type person anyway. With Sassy's a bit like standoffish, and all of a sudden, if she's having a I love you day, you get the love. Yeah. But she just came straight in from school. She was, would have been four, something yeah. like that. She came in, climbed on my knee, just looked at me like that, grabbed my head, and then kissed my head. And I was like, oh, what's that for, darling? And she went, you've got a poorly head, so I want to kiss it better. And it was just like, right, okay. And I spoke to Steph, and I think some of the parents have been talking about it, and she was outside. And um, she still does that every day now. Wow. When I see her. So every time I get to go away, like she kisses my head. You know, bedtime, I'll kiss her sometimes, and then she'll, oh, 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 and she'll come running down, and she kisses my head amazing, and stuff like mate. that. And um, it's just funny how, like, how kids are around yeah. it and stuff. Like, now we just use it as funny, or, you know, there's days where I have to sleep, you know, a lot of times, and, and now they just around me. Do you know what yeah. I mean? They're fine. Like, it's giving you love, mate. Yeah, and they just sometimes, if I'm asleep on the sofa, they'll come and like lay on top of me and just put a film on for them. Yeah. And then that, that's like daddy time. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You're there and sort of, and I can feel it, it's like a big blanket on me, but yeah. it's like the kids like just that's laying on me. That's all the love, mate. Four and, beautiful kids yeah. and a beautiful wife supporting you. And, you know, when you when you do that, it's like, you know, it, that's what keeps me going. But, you know, there's been times, you know, before I was on the medication and stuff. What sort of medication I'm, are you on? Uh, Things like that, search, searchaline or steroid. And what's that? Mean, what, what's that? Level the do? way they've it sort of levels you out because because I was so up and down. Like when I was anxious, like I've, I've there's a doctor uh, Gavin Newby who contacted me and said, "Look, I think I can. I'd like to try and help you and stuff like that." I said, "Right, brilliant." And um, he's the one that explained it all about like the energy of your brain and lack of it and the injuries and what it does to it and you know if if it hadn't been for Dr. Gale I'll be dead now 100% a couple of times I've been like at the train station and stuff it's like and he's one that told me so I whenever I go away what do you mean you'd be dead now if it weren't for him I would have killed myself no it's just sometimes it just gets really bad so when I have like I have this now yeah. I used to do it on my arm but now it's easy with it and if you smell it that's like Steph's perfume oh man Nice. And it's like, yeah. so when you start feeling anxious and stuff, yeah, it's like I just... Bring that back, yeah, the feeling back. Feeling back and that, and he taught me that. And then he was saying like, the thing with my brain now, he said it's like um, the old Nokia phones. Now the Nokia phones, yeah. you, you, you charge them for 12 hours, pull the thing out and suddenly yeah. it would be dead within an hour. Yeah. He said, that's what your brain's like yeah. now. And he, he came around and... I'd had a bad couple of days, but then he, he sat down and he just like looked out my back garden. All my all the bushes had been cut. The garden was looking really pristine and good and stuff. And he's like, "Did you do all that?" And I was like, "Yeah." He's like, "In one day." And I was like, like all proud. He went, "Yeah, yeah." yeah. And, and he was like, "You're an idiot." Mm. He said, "Look at you now." He says, "You can't, you can't do it anymore." And even though I, like I train and before I was, um, on on the the medication, I was training a lot on the. I had pellet on and all that sort of stuff. I was yeah. hammering that, hammering that. and In lockdown, this is? Lockdown, because I was working, but then, yeah. yeah. And then also just carried on, yeah. like fitness and stuff. But then suddenly I've taken, like, the medication now, and it's just... And this is, like, another bit where it's hit me. Like, it's... And I had to speak to Dr. Gavin about it. It's like, I feel like a part of me's died, like, on the medication. Like, that arsehole that... It sounds like someone come in the house or something something bad went happening. Yeah. I don't feel like I've got that. I just feel like I'm like, I drive like in the slow lane in my yeah. car now, it's 70 yeah. mile an hour, 60 mile an hour even on yeah. the motorway, but just cause it's easy. And that was, I was always like, oh, we've got yeah. to go, gotta go, gotta go. And that's, and it's it's a nice, don't get me wrong, it's a nice feeling, but then it's it does feel like, it's always been that bit of arsehole that kept me working yeah. hard, kept me pushing, kept me going. And suddenly I haven't got that now because it's, with everything just that's changed, out, isn't it? and I said yeah. like, you know, it's good, but on the other hand, I do feel like a part of me's died. Mm. And he says, look, you know, you, 
just got to go with it. Like, yeah. and and I see my life now. Really, my life's, I've, you know, I'm in this way now and stuff, and it's like it's happened. But I need it for my kids. I've yeah. I've got to try and fight for my kids because I was saying, when it, you know, it could be a couple of years. You know, you talk to Dawn Astle, who'd be perfect to come and, and do yeah. this if she'd do it. Yeah. Her, her dad's an absolute le legend of West Brom and yeah. England, and you know, he he got di well, he diagnosed with, with dementia and that, and then he was the first person in England to have CTE. Yeah. He went after death, they cut open and see it, and she's been fighting for that for like 20 years. Mm. And, you know, to see her fighting and stuff like that, it's like, I, my thing is, I want my kids to come and see me, not have to come and see me yeah. in a few years. And, you know, we're looking now at, what do we do? Like, because homes and stuff like that, you look like, not even look, 100 grand a year and that's for normal people you know if 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 you put me in a home and like, I'm big and I'm not working properly and stuff like that you're looking at probably two free carers yeah so you know you're looking at price and stuff and that this is the worrying thing about it and you know there was three of us two three years ago that had come out now there's over 300 that have been tested and and done and it's just growing more and more like the waiting list for people to get and it's all walks of life it's all amateur rugby Professional rugby, do you know what I mean? And how many league, players? There's... How many players who may have it don't even know they got it? And that's the thing because our age about, group. And there's there's some of it. I call it that are, are still on the uh, breast of rugby. Yeah, literally earning their money from it, and they well, they're not wanting to speak up no. because they're running off what getting yeah. paid by the rugby clubs or by the RFU. Yeah, and stuff like that. And it's like, well, you know, when I first came out, like people, mainly women, to be honest, would on social media just slagging me off. It's private must saying it's disgusting, like you've broken my, my son's dream. I used to respect you, now I don't. We hope your kids get injured and die. And joking, and no, it was like, and so like, when so when this all come out and you come out with Alex and yeah. whatever you you're saying you got this abuse. Yeah. Cause I think people are like, oh they're just they just did it for the money, they're just trying to it's like no like, You're not interested in the money this, this, like you said this, before, yeah. This is this is real. Bad. This yeah. is like, like what's happening is ridiculous, and it's it's been played down and not talked of and stuff like that. And you're just like, you know, there's um, Sam Peters. His books just come out now, and he's he worked in the press and he was a rugby journalist and stuff. And I went to meet him, and he was saying, look, he'd rear his head up, and then suddenly people would get like free trips to Twickenham yeah. and all it, and suddenly Under the carpet. story would go yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Like, and it was just it was just like unbelievable what was going on. And you see, it and you're like. You know, now you look back and now it's here to stay. And, yeah. and the way it is, it's just gone around the world. Yeah. And they're trying to change it. And, the, you know, with us, we wanted to save the game. I, you know, I love the people in rugby. You know, would I let my kids play tackle rugby now? No, I wouldn't. You wouldn't? No way no. on earth. No way. And with scum caps? Doesn't matter. That Still doesn't do anything. Nothing. American no. football. Yeah. Yeah. The brain, the brain's floating. Mm. If it stops with something on the outside, it mm. doesn't matter because the brain's still. Mm. And that's a false sense of security, if yeah. anything. And um, and like I said years ago, the junior rugby was different. It was like uh, flies around shit, really. Yeah, follow the ball. They're literally, yeah, everyone yeah. just running around yeah, yeah, and just yeah. you know, and you're like pass the ball and backwards now, even, and passing that. Even my little nine-year-old now, it's like take the ball up, bang, yeah, down, pop. Bang! It's like wow, it's defensive line, defensive line. So yeah. all the defensive, yeah. oh, defensive line, defensive line. It's yeah. like it's been drilled to isn't me, it? like touch rugby and all that. It shouldn't even just be about backward passing. It should be two teams yeah. running around in space, peripheral vision, flicking the ball, passing. Yeah, agree. Playing, playing like you know, yeah. keep ball. Yeah, and it's like, can you get to ten? Can yeah. you get to this? And st and then build up. You know, there's yeah. no need to to just literally all oh, they. It's, it sounds like it's, it's rugby league. Rug, yeah. Rugby unions come rugby league, yeah. but with rucks, mm. really. The way that take it up, take mm. it, bam, bam. Which, you know, I, I used to love rugby league. Yeah. I, I don't ever want to be one of these people that's, oh, you've just hate yeah. rugby league. It's, it's not, but there's there's two different sports for a reason. Mm. And, you know, it's suddenly like it's like this tackle height thing. Mm. You know, the rugby league came in to that big high wrap it up and all yeah. that stuff. It was always tackle below the shoulder. Yeah. You know, it's always round the waist, slide down. Yeah. You know, and I know things change, and I don't want to sound like an old get and stuff, yeah. but it's like, what happened with rugby? Rugby's grown so much without people actually watching yeah. what was going on. 
and all of a sudden now this has happened and it's a bit like what do we do and people blame this blame blame that as well like us for people dropping out of rugby and yeah. stuff like you, you, you got covid then like there's the junior clubs up near me like you got the fat lads mm. that I was working on the water with and talking to some of them and some other lads and you look at it like now they're taping training they're taping games yeah. and everything like that so the old props used to be there like yeah. the bar afterwards they've got away from the missus yeah. so they haven't got had the yeah. RH <laughs> come training all of a sudden in training now they've been clocked they've been yeah. everything's clocked like oh you're just lazy you're this yeah. it's yeah. like I'll get that home why, yeah. why, why am I coming here yeah. and then self-employed they get injured yeah and years ago, you'd have heard of the odd person in Northampton, oh, he's popped a shoulder, this bloke from Men's Own or yeah. something like that. That's what, Whereas now, it's like you're getting three, four, five, six, seven a year of like big injuries yeah. within in the men's section yeah. alone. If they're self-employed, they're not getting in the in the mm. van on Monday. They're not getting paid. Mm. There's, no, there's no thing out there. And then mm. also they're there and they're like at the bar on the Saturday, oh, yeah, I made... Oh, see that big tackle I've done, mm. and I run the ball, mm. and they're like, "Well, let's, let's have a look at that." Oh, look, you look crap. Look yeah. at that. Oh, waddling along, and all. so it's <laughs> yeah. a bit like, why? Why? So yeah. That? yeah. So the whole thing's come professional, yeah. even at amateur level. So yeah. it's a bit like, yeah. And also the scary part is like us for a year, mm. we could all go and play on the same pitch on Saturday. Mm. So you could have someone in, like an office person, mm. then you could have a farmer who's just got brute normal yeah. strength. Then you got a gym bunny like Hask, yeah. who, and then suddenly they're all on the pitch because the bloke that works in the office is quite clever, so yeah. he and he understands rugby and stuff. Mm. And suddenly they're meeting, and, and it's not an invasive sport anymore. Yeah, it's a full contact sport, it's a violent, legalized sport. So it's like mm. so organized, you can't hide anymore, yeah. even at that level. Yeah. I just want to go back, pick up and say, before you got on the medication, how would you react to things? Would you be short and snappy with things? Would you ever get road rage? Would you ever get upset with your family? Would you ever snap at things around you? Um, it was more like, you know, you get road rage, like shouting and screaming, getting yeah. all like, but yeah, like with the family, you'd, like you just, just be in a bad mood. Like it's, it's weird and, and the worst thing someone can say to you is like, oh, what's wrong? It's like, oh, oh mate, it, I don't fuck, know. Yeah, I, don't, like, yeah. I, I don't know. Or, you know, whereas now if there's something wrong, I can go, oh no, it's just, that's upset me or something like that. Yeah. I can work. Whereas then you just, you just feel like, you just feel terrible. And then in my mind, it's like an out of body experience. I'm thinking I'm being an arsehole here, mm. but I can't like, stop it, stop it. And, mm. and you just not. And it's mm. like, I, I, and it was just that. And then it would spiral me even more. And then suddenly I'm thinking, you know, I can't work, you know, I can't do good jobs anymore. Like I can't go on sites because if someone else gets injured, they won't get their insurance because yeah. it's like he was on site. So he was supposed to be looking after him. Yeah. And so, so suddenly my work life that I thought he had has shrunk massively. With that. And then also the opportunities because of what's going on with me has shrunk it even more. Whereas yeah. I always thought I'd be one of these blokes you know, obviously there's heart attacks, there's all yeah. this other stuff, but I thought I'll, I'll be one, I'll just work forever. I, I enjoy it, go out, work, you know. Yeah. Even when I was out digging the old sweeping the road and stuff, mm. I loved it. Do you know what I mean? Just out there, just yeah. singing to myself. And even my missus said like, you know, I was on board of directors and stuff like that and management teams back in Dubai. Mm. Where she said the happiest she's known me is when I was out on the tools with the lads, just having a laugh and stuff. Brilliant, and now mate. you can't really do that, it's like, yeah, and then they so they said, look, we'll see if we can get you this night work. Yeah, and so what are you doing for work as we sit today? Um, I'm with Medigold, which is an occupational health company. Yeah, um, and it's like into brain injury and mental health because mm. a, a big part of their mental health, or well, a big part of their business, is mental health, and I think a massive chunk of mental health problems is actually brain injury that people yeah. don't know. Like, it's, you know, you go skiing, mm. so you imagine you go up, fall over, mm. bang your head. Don't think anything of it. Yeah. Have a couple of drinks that night. Come back to work. Three, four, five weeks later, all of a sudden you start feeling lethargic. Yeah. Things don't. You'd you'd never put that to the skate. To the yeah. You just think the first thing you say is stress. Mm. Oh, stress at work. My mental health's a bit out, out. But it's not. You've injured your brain. Yeah. And your brain's. But, but it's that's how long it can take. Yeah. And um, it's like for instance, dad spoke to me 
few months ago now and he was saying look I just want to thank you and I was like oh what's that for and he said my son was playing a game and he said he got knocked out and he went actually no I, 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 what was I saying then your mate you were with your mates and his son got knocked out mate tell me about the tell me about the court case tell me where we're at today with the court case uh, How many players involved? Who's involved? What stage are we at? There's like hundreds, hundreds are involved now. So it's like a who are the originals? Good... Yourself and Pops, Pops, Alex Popman. Yeah. Okay. And when did that start? What year did that start? About two years ago, we started the process okay. and stuff. And like... where are we, and where are we? Where how has that journey been for you over the past twenty four months? The thing is, like, you th it was stressful at first because you're thinking, right, let's let's get it going, let's get yeah. it going, and people going, oh, it will take years and stuff, and then. But then once again, it's like I'm one of these. Like, there's there's clever people out there in the world, and there's people that do their jobs and stuff like that. And that's that's that now. That's I can't think about that. I can't do. It. I don't. You know, we'll get updates now and then. But for me, that process that's down to the solicitors and the barristers and all that because yeah. I can't I can't affect that. Yeah. What I can try and affect now is having a better life for my kids and then also trying to help other people. Yeah, brilliant. So, you know, you can, you can, it can put your mind into a spin like, mm. oh, you know, what's going to happen? What's, and it's like, well, it is what it is. And mm. I'm a bit sceptical about it because I always think, you know, you look at these, we're up against a massive beast here. Yeah. And it's like... And the beast is who? Well, uh, it'd be like, well, rugby and RFU yeah. and everyone like that. And you look at it and you think, the little man never wins. <laughs> do, you, do you know what I mean? It's I, like I, I disagree. Yeah, I think it's all going to come. It's all going to fall into place. But for me, it's the changes that we need, and we, yeah. we need people to say, you know, there is a link. Yeah. So don't deny it. You know, Australian rules, rugby league, yeah. all this stuff, coming out going. Well, actually, there there is a link. Yeah. Once that happens, then you start. We can put stuff in place to start helping the future generations. Yeah. yeah. And helping and making rugby. More aware. There's, don't worry, there's there's risks in everything. Mm. You get people. Oh, I knew what you're doing. I knew what I was doing. No, you didn't. No, because we weren't educated about yeah, it. Yeah. So straight away you're just lying. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And if you did, you were in the wrong job. You should have been mm. the one they advising then. Um, so when we do that, it's like just then we can come up with a plan and and yeah. we can and then we can look after the is people that are plan, really suffering. Is there a plan going into place right now? And you said that you two were the start. You and Alex. You and Pops. How many players? Are, how many players are, are, have come forward and had scanned? Do you say three hundred odd? Yeah, it's about they've had done. scanned, and oh, and every yeah. one of those scans to say you have got brain damage. Damage, and that, yeah. And is there in that three hundred odd? Is there some people with bigger brain damage than others? Yeah, yeah. Is there a yeah. pool of people with brain damage the size of the yellow yeah. slug you were talking yeah. about? Yeah, 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 yeah. There's, there's a load like that, and then there's like the ones that aren't as bad, I think. But I haven't seen any other. I speak to the lads. I haven't seen any other scans. I haven't, I haven't seen the diagnosis and stuff because it's one of them. It's I try and speak to the person and see like how's it affecting you. Yeah. Like what you know? Can I put stuff in place like I, like Doctor Gavin has for me? Yeah. And that's the scary thing. Like you, you try and go to the NHS. You try and there's nothing. No. There's nothing there no. at all. Okay. And I don't want to slag the NHS off yeah. because you know they've done. Yeah. Mate, the people in it, Amazing. people running it, yeah, a joke. But yeah. the people actually there, yeah, I agree. And it's like, right, so we've got to come out with ways now, and I've been so lucky, and I hate saying this, like the only reason Dr. Gavin at first got involved with me was because of what I've done and who I am. And, yeah. and I hate saying that because yeah. like, you know, but so now Dr. Gavin is a, just an amazing human being. And it's yeah. like, right, obviously he's got his own life, that he's, he's got his own business and stuff. Yeah. But it's like, right, I'm starting up a foundation. Foundation is called? Head On. Yeah. And it's not about sport. Yeah. It's for brain injury and early onset dementia and mental health. Yeah. And we're going to try and get groups together. That's the whole point of raising yeah. awareness, raising money, so we can go out and we can help help people. Guide. Yeah, there's a, yeah. you know another chap that I speak to. I don't want to mention his name, but he got run over. Yeah. So he's what ex player? No, no, no. no just okay, a, just okay. Just you know, normal chap. Working a normal job, got a good job, running uh, warehouses or something like that, gets run over, boom, brain injury, out yeah. of it. Yeah. 
got young kids, got stuff like that. It's like, so what do you do? Like all of a sudden, imagine if you, you're not insured properly, you're yeah. not like that, you yeah. know, goes for a court case, mm. like your mortgage got, got to be paid, yeah. everything's got to be paid. You got, you know, it sounds but like in my house now, I'm having to put all the bills over to Steph. Yeah. Everything's, you know, where it was a team and I do my bit, you should do her yeah. bit. And then, you know, now I'm having to try and, in my mind, put things in place, put like teach mm. her to do stuff and take responsibilities and stuff. And it's like, that. It's, it's things like that that hurts me more than anything is like having to do that. Yeah. Cause you think, you know, and, and I'll do it like on Friday, I just hit the wall when I was just like so tired and I'd had an amazing day on, I think it was Tuesday, I'd gone to a school um, and it's for kids on their last chance. They've all been expelled yeah. and they've all, you know, some are involved in the county lines mm. and all this, and you, and they're just just amazing kids. Mm. Like some of them, I'm sat there and we're having discussions about my past mm. and stuff. And there's a kid in the corner asleep. I mean, kids walk in and who the fucking look at the size of you, you fucking. You, and it's all and you're like, at first you got to get used because you're in a school <laughs> yeah. in my environment, and you're like, all right, mate, how are you then? Yeah. You're right, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, but it's. I could see when I was speaking to him, we speak, speak to like the, the different age groups and the work the teachers do, mm. the work for like, and the kids there as well. Like there's some that you'd never want to give up. Don't get me wrong. There's some you think you just, yeah, it's hard. Like, yeah. and, and there's some like that was talking and suddenly they came closer mm. and suddenly then by the end of it, you're talking to him like, yeah. you know, what do you want to do? And stuff. And one of them was brilliant. And it, cause he's, he's, he said, I can't wait till I'm 14. And he's only for, he's, I can't wait till I'm 14. He said, then I can get a job like washing pans, yeah. a, a pot washer, yeah. because he said, I want to get involved in like being a chef and yeah, stuff like that. So. And he's like, and and it's not like this, you, some of them like, yeah, I'm going to be a gangster. I'm yeah. going gonna, gonna, gonna to get a big car and I'm yeah. just going to sell drugs. And, yeah. and, all this, and they're talking like that. Whereas these, the other ones, they're like, I don't want to, I don't want to be here. Yeah, like, brilliant. I've, I've, no, I've messed up and I know like, but this is what I want. Mm. and I've got problems because I do lose my temper and stuff like that and mm. then you see them and you think do you know what and it's even if you can say one of them and turn it around mm. it's like what, yeah. what needs to be done good and, for you man and so I'd, I'd done that and that's the thing with emotional like if we get angry I get drained but if I get really happy it drains me even more okay and then then I've done coaching I mean, and then Thursday I just felt myself going and then Friday like that's me Mrs. took the kids to school. I'm like in tears, just like I can't. Like I just feel useless. I'm just like I've had enough. Like, like I, 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 they, everyone they're better off without me. And you're just there, and you're just like it's just, it's just tiring. When mm -hmm. like because I had that, <clears throat> so that if I needed to work, I'd just go and do anything. Yeah. Whereas now I can't, and I'm just like, what, what, what do I do? Like what? And suddenly you know, you're another story and stuff like that for someone, and you, you sort of gets me up to try and help them yeah. but then suddenly you know it just it's just another nail in my coffin thinking there's just more people like it's just horrendous and <clears throat> you get like stories as well of at a, a school down how were you how were you on that friday just gone so i was i was ready like dr gavin i spoke to dr gavin because i thought i'm in trouble here and it's like one of the first times i've really called him because i was like steph had gone out and i was just thinking i'm just gonna go out i'm just gonna go and the train station bomb done and I was just like so I'm talking I'm thinking like I need the kids I need the kids and stuff and then can I just hold you there mate your family is everything mate Steph and your kids are absolutely freaking everything to you mate you're not a burden to them whatsoever it's just when you think about it though it's like I don't know it's like disappointing I like, know when you just I just can't be what I want to be all the time you know, and just like mate you're an amazing human being Tomo you're loved by so many people and your four kids mate and your wife yeah. and that's, you know so then you know Steph came back and uh, <coughs> she's like we just went out for went to the tip little thing it was like on my to do list it's like right I've got to get myself back up so it's like went the tip, and suddenly it's like I've done something. I've done something. You know, yeah. if, on my daily jobs, it sounds like this is like to make myself is like pick up the dog shit in the garden, 
do that like three times a day and like yeah. <laughs> that's yeah that's a good thing in my life now yeah. do you know what I mean it's yeah. a bit like and then suddenly when you sit back and you think you know it's a bit different than it was but you know it's and then we went and had breakfast and it's like you know just a like a good chat and then you just like I said just feel like in that little bubble with yeah. Steph and I and just get it and it's like right have a nap in the afternoon so I had a, a, like lay down on the sofa with Steph over my head and she'd like just so and then I'll just sleep for a couple of hours and then then I'll just start coming out yeah and then uh are you re are you recognizing all of these since been on the medication are you recognizing when you're feeling <clears throat> yeah yeah but I think I'd I just for a moment, I just thought I was normal again. For a bit. not, not, I know it's like, but what, well, you felt that when she came back home, are you saying you yeah, felt normal again? I felt, yeah, I felt like I can just keep going, yeah, and and I'm good. And then suddenly, I could feel it a little bit coming on, and you're a bit like, and and you think, oh yeah, I'm sort of bulletproof again. I'm fine, you know. This yeah. is, and you do. You, there's days when you think, oh, it's it's, it's not real. Like it's yeah. fine. I'm I'm good. I'm good. And then yeah. suddenly, bam! It, and like I said, it just came on, and I just fell apart, and you're just like. But uh, yeah, it's weird because Sven was away at school, um, a school uh, trip mm. in London. So uh, you know, I take her friend as well to um, footy training. Footy stuff, training, yeah. and that was brilliant. Is that, do you feel like if you feel like you got safe havens in places in yeah. the week? You're going I'm taking my girls footy training. I've got my wife there for lunch. I'm going for. Have you got safe havens yeah. everywhere? Yeah, okay. totally that. And if you take yourself out of that comfort zone of those sofas, how does that make you feel? Is it I'm like anxious okay. and stuff like that? Like you know, it's <clears throat> it's weird. Like I used to like the day before it used to be horrendous. Like I used to just end up arguing with Steph. The day like, before you got something planned, yeah, or, to okay. travel and stuff, and just try and talk them out of like not doing it and stuff and and then you know just like no I'm not doing it yeah. and stuff like that and you know when I'm on a high it was like when I'm on the medication when I went on the medication like because you have the highs mm. I used to organize everything yeah yeah I can do it and then suddenly reality comes and then I, then I hit a low as well and then I did an even lower low because I'd have to call everything off yeah because I went in the and it was just like what is so you know doing stuff it's it's all got to be organised. Yeah. It's got to be, and I have my new usual. Like I have Wednesday night training, uh, Thursdays mm. breakfast with my mate who I do the coaching with, then the girls go and train with the boys, and yeah. Thursday evening to so there. I'm taking another tea there yeah, to have okay. it. So you got everything laid out. Yeah, yeah, and, and then and that it, must come from the rugby days of having re everything regimented, and that regiment that's, that's taken been taken away. Yeah, I think I think that, but I've, I've they say with brain injury and dementia it's the same as well like yeah, okay. you, you want even more structure you yeah. want stuff to be the same and if it's not it's like if you talk about well, we'd booked to go to a restaurant and say there's two restaurants together and we get to one yeah. and suddenly it's closed or something's happened with a book in but the other restaurant's just as good next door I wouldn't be able to go to that yeah because that's not the plan yeah okay and Steph would be going oh my god here we go here we go and so <laughs> like, oh, 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 get home oh. yeah so you know it's a big thing like for her she's doing a talk bless her and she's you know for us to do the tv and and the book because i'd never done anything yeah commercially really i played rugby and then that was it really and it was only a decision like steph's decision really mainly as well because it's like right if i come out about this right at the beginning yeah like we're we're out there we've got to you're either in or you're out so you can't just go there and then other people start coming out and then suddenly you go, well, actually, I'm just going to look after myself here. Yeah. <clears throat> you can't, you can't, and Steph was like, yeah, yeah, fine, let's do it. And so suddenly, you know, now she's going to do a talk in at Oxford Uni and stuff. Yeah. For, for, and it's, I think it's brilliant, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm so proud of her. And What's her talk? <clears throat> it's going to be on, like, being like a carer, really, yeah. and like the other side of, of the stories and stuff. Yeah. And, um, And she's doing it with Dr. Gavin. Brilliant. So that's, you know, that's. When's that? Do you know when that May, is? In May, May the. She's away for a couple of days. Okay. So, uh, you know, she's. And I'm like proud of her doing that massively. And where are you going to be when she's. she's I'll have the kids. Okay, brilliant. So let her have her. Crawling all over you. Yeah, that's Quality. the thing. Like, it's like. 
it's like things like <clears throat> I was like because we've got the kids, we've got no real family network around us yeah. to, to help the kids. We're having to sort of, and that's the thing like we're doing stuff like and like awards nights and stuff like that. Like, yeah. I want Steph to come with me, but we've got no one to look after the kids. So right, it's okay. like we're always having to do stuff Separate separately. And it's like, what's an ideal scenario for you right now for having more structure and more events to go to? Would you, would you do you like going to speak at events do you, or does that make you anxious? Do you like being paid to, you know, you're a, you're a rugby legend, you know, and uh, with 74 caps and British lions here and da, da, da. And I don't think you kind of don't recognize that, but everyone looking in thinks that. You know, and I, I, is there a is there a space now where you want to have more structure to go? Well, I want to go to that rugby club and do a talk, and that rugby club do a talk about this. Or is that not really your bag? I'm not really because I haven't got the the stories and stuff like that. Like there's there's like nothing really there. Like there's like the early days, but then that's it. There's like people want to hear about World Cups. They want to hear stuff like that, and there's nothing there for me. Like and it's so it's like if I'm doing that, I'd be like a, a phony sort of thing. Do you know what I mean? I'd be like. I don't That's, think I don't think you would, mate. So you just no. walking into a room with two hundred rugby lads in there, their wives and what have you, is enough mm, for know. you to get up and talk about your past and what you've done and what the, the, what you're going through. Mm. But that's is that, know, would that help? Would that help other rugby players recognise that? Yeah, but so I've I've, I've started to I do the more try and do more of like the the medical type ones. Where yeah, I okay. Because I'm like, if I try and write stuff down, I can't because I like I start trying to read it and it my reading's not very good now yeah. so it's like this is all stuff that sort of comes in and <clears throat> that's why I've always said I'll just be up front and, and, and frank whatever comes into my mind yeah. I'll say and you know that's the thing what I want to do is I'll always be honest about it you know mm. I, I, I'll say when they started talking about medication I was like no chance because yeah. I'm not because I a mate's mum years ago was on it yeah. and it just completely zoned her out and I was yeah. just like I'm not having that and then Dr. Gavin sort of laughed. He went, Steve, it's a few years since then. Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, you know. And then also, I'll, when I talk about the suicide and stuff, I talk about it because I'll, I'll put my hand up and I'll say, I was the first one when people committed suicide. And I'll be like, yeah. what have they done that for? Yeah. But uh, until you're in that moment and you like, you think you're the most selfless person that time because you just, it's like you, you're doing everyone a favour. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's. At first, it'd be upset, but then suddenly they haven't got a carrier. They don't have to be involved in looking after you, worrying about you, mm. you know, me saying I'm going to do something and then I can't do it and stuff like that. And it's like, you know, you don't want to let them down. Mm. <clears throat> and that's what, you know, we do. And, you know, like I said, with, with Mike McGeevy, you know, the way he went through the, his battle, like, yeah. pff, like that was phenomenal. And it just, you look at other people all the time and you think, right, you know, we, you know, we've got to keep going, but yeah. there are times where it's dark place. Mm. Just before we finish up here, where can people find your book, and how can people contact you personally? Um, on Amazon, uh, you can get the book. What's the book called? This oh, well, I'm forgot, I'm forgettable because I'm nearly I'm unforgettable, <laughs> and that weren't me being thin. <laughs> God, God. And, uh, it's called Unforgettable. Steve Thompson on Amazon. And anywhere you can buy them online. Yeah, um, and then the TV show on BBC. Yeah, this is Steve. I think Steve Thompson, Dementia and Me. I think it is. Yeah, and um, and how can people contact you if people are in this situation now or listening? It might be someone's husband. It might be someone's wife. It might be the. How can people contact you to ask questions and? Well, at the moment we've got LinkedIn, but then I'm doing the head on. So we're just going through the process of getting the the number sorted. Yeah, the charity number. Um, and then we'll be and that charity is called Head On Head On yeah. okay good for you um, and also what I'm going to do I'm gonna, I want to do a walk next year yeah which is getting a bit later on now so not as if it's going to be like June or, or July but yeah. I want to walk around the country but go to all different facilities for brain injury good for you, carers man. stuff like that so if anyone's got any of these facilities like there's one in Surrey where it's a school for kids with dementia yeah um, and it's none of them been born with it. It's yeah. because of illness or an accident, yeah. and it's from nursery up to A level. Yeah, and that, and they're just constantly losing their funding wow. and stuff. And you see like that. So there's these sort of places that I want to go and I'll walk, and I won't be able to do it all in one go. Like this is nothing like I'm there. Like yeah, I'm just, I'll walk like 900 miles. It's not a problem. I'll yeah. just keep going. And Doctor Gavin's like, dark place on Friday, weren't you? Yeah. And it's like, well, do you think that's going to happen? Yeah. And I was like, 
and he said, look, it's just not, you know, we'll plan it properly yeah. and we'll do it, but I'm gonna do it like, and go around and just raise awareness Brilliant. for it all. Because, you well, know. We can all get behind that. Yeah, and the thing is yeah. for me, walking, like cycling, I've done the cycling thing years ago and it's like, pff, I don't want a sore ass again. Yeah. Proper running, sore, sore ass, isn't it? Running's the, fine. This body's this not running. <laughs> a nice walk. So walking, yeah. walking, and I must have, you know, I, I've started getting into my walking massively and because it does sort you out and the walking community, like, I asked about what sort of boots I should get yeah. and literally so many people would like, and then suddenly they must have looked up of, oh, who I was sort of thing, like yeah. what I was suffering with. And they're like, oh, I've got friends with okay, dementia yeah. that we walk with. Yeah, and it's brilliant. so good. So, you know, I didn't talk about the sport. Like, it was yeah. just the walking. Yeah. Sorry. Um, and when you look at it like that, it was just a massive community. And I thought, do you know yeah. what? How good would it be if I was walking around? A bit like in both of them. Yeah, that's right. I was about to say. And God. then like, people in wheelchairs, people in facility Can carers. Can kind of join you for all, a mile or whatever it may be. Do you know what I mean? And, and just sort of get a real sort of thing for it. And just, do you know why? Because I'm thinking, no, when you're doing something like that and you've got people walking with you and yeah. that, the people that are sort of stuck in home caring for people, yeah. we, we're thinking about them. Yeah. Because that's the, you know, when I'm there in a chair, just sort of sat there like, I'm not really, gonna, I'm not going to care. Yeah. But that, I call it the hand grenade effect around that's gone off around. Mm. Mm. You know, people give their lives up to be carers. Yeah. Massively. And Special then suddenly, people. you know, when I die, it's like, what what's going to be there for Steph and the kids really yeah. and stuff like that. And, and other carers, like they've cared for someone for so long, they've lost their identity, they've lost yeah. everything. And it shouldn't be like that. You know, we should be able to help people re reborn yeah. again, do you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. We come back and have a real, you know, get what they can out of mm. life as well. So people can get you, Steve Thompson on LinkedIn. Yeah, send yeah. Send you messages. Yeah. People can get you, can people get you on Instagram? Yeah, yeah, Instagram. Um, I'll give you my email address as well for the head on. So anyone out there listening, you want to get in contact, contact Tom on, on LinkedIn and uh, Instagram and there's an email coming now. Oh yeah. Steve Thompson at headon.org.uk. Thompson spelled T-H-O-M-P-S-O-N. Steve Thompson at headon.org.uk. Anyone wants to reach out, please reach out. Um, Tom, this has been an amazing episode. And no, you're an amazing so human being, mate, is, mate, with a massive heart, and you're loved by everyone. And um, do your four daughters proud and your wife. And you're doing really well, mm. mate. And we're here for you. Everyone's here for you. Um, let's get this head on. Let's get behind it. Mm. I'll help Cheers, you with mate. that. Appreciate that, mate. Yeah, I appreciate your time, mate, mm. and you're a special human. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Good man. Cheers, mate.